obsessive-compulsive OCD, or impulsive disorders. Chapter 1. OCD slash impulsive slash compulsive behaviors. Obsessive compulsive disorder slash OCD info. Obsessive compulsive disorder slash OCD is characterized by anxious thoughts or rituals you feel you can't control. If you have OCD, you may be plagued by persistent, unwelcome thoughts or images or by the urgent need to engage in certain rituals. You may be obsessed with germs or dirt so you wash your hands over and over. You may be filled with doubt and feel the need to check things repeatedly. You might be preoccupied by thoughts of violence and fear that you will harm people close to you. You may spend long periods of time touching things or counting, you may be preoccupied by order and symmetry, you may have persistent thoughts of performing sexual acts that are repugnant to you or you may be troubled by thoughts that go against your religious beliefs. Obsessions are recurrent, intrusive thoughts and impulses. Common themes of obsessions include contamination with germs or loss of control over violent or sexual impulses. Compulsions are repetitive behaviors or patterns of thought that reduce the anxiety that accompanies an obsession. Compulsions can be ritualistic patterns of hand washing, checking, or praying. The disturbing thoughts or images are called obsessions and the rituals that are performed trying to dispel them are called compulsions. There is no pleasure in carrying out the rituals you are drawn to, only temporary relief from the discomfort caused by the obsessions. A lot of otherwise normal people have some manner of OCD symptoms such as checking the stove several times before leaving the house but the disorder is diagnosed only when such activities consume at least an hour a day, are very distressing and interfere with daily life. Most adults with this condition recognize that what they're doing is senseless but they can't stop it. Some people learn to control it with their minds. Some people learn to control it at work and then go nuts when they get home. Some people though, particularly children with OCD, may not realize that their behavior is out of the ordinary. OCD strikes men and women equally. It strikes about 2% of the population. It usually first shows up during early adulthood. The course of the disease is variable, symptoms may come and go, they may ease over time or they can grow progressively worse. Evidence suggests that OCD might run in families. Depression or other anxiety disorders may accompany OCD. Some people with OCD have eating disorders. In addition, they may avoid situations in which they might have to confront their obsessions. They may use drugs and alcohol. If OCD grows severe enough, it can keep someone from holding down a job or from carrying out normal responsibilities at home but more often it doesn't develop to those extremes. Research has led to the development of medications and therapies that can help OCD patients. Behavioral therapy, specifically a type called exposure and response prevention, has proven useful for treating OCD. It involves exposing the person to whatever triggers the problem and then helping him or her forego the usual ritual. For instance, they might have the patient touch something dirty and then not wash his hands. This therapy is often successful in patients who complete a behavioral therapy program, though results have been less favorable in some people who have both OCD and depression. Books about compulsions in general are at hashtag 616.8526-86 or RC552 to RC564 at the library. Impulse Control Disorder slash Intermittent Explosive Disorder An impulse control disorder is an overwhelming desire to go against your better judgment even though it might hurt you and you might hurt others. The most common one is called an intermittent explosive disorder, generally anger, thoughts of violence which manifest themselves by rude remarks, explosive outbursts and violent actions. It's like afflicted people can't control themselves. It's almost an unconscious act done out of instinct. Tension builds up beforehand, the individual releases it through the impulse and feels good in the moment for releasing this energy but almost immediately after, realize that what they've done is wrong, regret it and feel guilty about it. The most common impulse control disorders are rudeness, violent acts, kleptomania, pathological gambling, pyromania, trichotillomania, and OCD hoarding. They all have a motive of self-gratification through tension release. 
A gambling addiction is an individual who continues to gamble even though it destroys his life by alienating loved ones and using all his money up on his addiction thereby losing it because all gamblers lose by the law of averages since the odds are always in favor of the house in the long run. Pyromania is a fire bug, an individual who likes to commit arson, start destructive fires for the thrill of it. Trichotillomania is the desire to pull out one's hair from the scalp, not to cut it but to actually pull it out. Impulse control disorder are often associated with order disorders such as depression, manic depression, anxiety, etc. ADHD-depression-relief.com allpsych.com slash disorders slash impulse underscore control slash impulse control disorders animal hoarding slash pet hoarding there is animal hoarding collecting a large number of pets which some people say is a mental illness never mind the fact that it could be about love of animals earthtimes.org slash article slash show slash 76006.html Bitch.com.au slash news slash national slash call for animal hoarding Tobzina's mental illness. Compulsive hoarding slash clutter addiction. Hoarding is considered an impulse control illness because it's really about buying stuff on impulse that you don't really need or picking stuff out of the garbage then saving it even though you'll never use it. There are several possible explanations for this. You were poor at one time and now overcompensate by buying more stuff than you need. Owning things helps relieve a sense of loneliness and emptiness. You were brainwashed by society to think happiness is owning things. Buying stuff fills some obsessive well of emptiness within yourself. Hoarding is also called syllogomania or dysposophobia. There seems to be a correlation with obsessive compulsive disorder. CLUTTERTOClarity.com, How to Stop Hoarding en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash compulsive underscore hoarding kleptomania slash shoplifting according to the american psychiatric association kleptomania is a rare mental disorder it is called an impulse control disorder a person feels the tension from the desire to steal something so when he or she does so successfully the tension is off they feel exhilarated Kleptomania is the impulse to steal items because it relieves some kind of self-generated tension in the individual. It is a way of getting back at the world for perceived past injustices. After the person gets away with it, the tension leaves, he or she feels a sense of euphoria for a while like they've won something. Although kleptomania is called an impulse control disorder, it's not recognized as a legal defense for theft in any country. Expertlaw.com slash library slash security slash shoplifting.html Allpsych.com slash disorders slash impulse underscore control slash kleptomania.html Answers.com slash topic slash kleptomania Why honest people steal.com Money slash shopping addiction slash compulsive buying disorder Don't let your possessions possess you the main idea behind luxury shopping which is shopping for things beyond needs is that you have an empty soul. You're buying to fill an emotional void, to make you feel good for a minute or two. There's something missing in your life whereby you're not living an inspired lifestyle that keeps you happy within yourself and slash or you don't feel loved enough so one of the ways you fill up this emptiness is you buy useless crap because it helps you gives you a momentary, transient tingle but ultimately does not solve the problem of the empty soul. According to the book The High Price of Materialism by Tim Kasser, materialistic people are less honest, less ethical than other people and less interested in personal relationships with other people. The more concerned you are with wealth, the less happier you'll be and the more likely you'll be stressed out and depressed over a lifetime because ultimately, these things can't satisfy the deep spiritual things you need to give you a solid sense of identity and peace about yourself. Be happy with what you got right now. The capitalist ideology always wants us to reach for something more, a bigger house, newer car, more stuff but the happiest people are those at peace with the lives they're living without aspiring for more consumer goods or a promotion at work to make more money to buy more goods. Money is not the solution to a happy life, it's having a feeling within that you're living the life you were born to live by purging the natural inspired potential in your soul. 
The symbols of success in a capitalist world are to have lots of money, a big house and own lots of material things. While these are good things to have to enhance the quality of your life, your real worth comes from your ability to do soulful pursuits to keep yourself inspired day after day. This type of lifestyle hasn't changed for me through the different cycles I went through being both poor and wealthy. Money is good to free my mind from the obsession of earning enough so that I don't have to worry about it but I still live in a pretty small bedroom with bare walls and no home decor just like I did when I was a hippie artist living a free life and I don't feel any different inside just because I have more money. The challenge for me has always been to honor my intuitive inner standard regardless of whether I'm materially rich or poor. The money is nice because I can buy what I want when I want but the truth is that the only time I was in a shopping mall in the past three years was when I got my eyes tested. I don't need much. I wear the same clothes year after year. If my sneakers work, I don't have to bother buying a new pair. I don't believe in home decor or most of the other things people buy to outfit their homes to reach some illusory standard of capitalist success. I have very few tools because I have no interest in that home improvement crap so many people seem to think enhances their lives. I don't want to harp it on here except to say that I believe the corporate pop culture agenda of the media, in particular TV, is subtly designed to make people feel deficient and jealous of all the material wealth they see on all the stupid programs so they give up their hearts and souls to try to reach the standard of material success when they don't realize the key to life is to enjoy the journey through inspired action in both noble soulful pursuits and the pursuit of carnal hedonistic pleasures. These are action things, things you do through sustained movement day after day. They have very little to do with how big your house is, how many things you own or what kind of car you drive yet how many people live by this ideology. Not very many. I lived with the bare bone basics for a long time. It's just naturally the way I live. Since I'm against the materialistic pop culture ideology beyond the financial freedom to enable me to live a good life not acquire a bunch of stupid things I'll never use, my life is fairly simple, hassle free and I have few worries. I'm the type of guy who hates distractions so much that I prefer a small house with a small yard because it means I don't have to mow the lawn, clean it up, shovel snow, etc. which is counterintuitive to the materialistic ideology of always gunning for a bigger house. The only I thing I gun for is to stay inspired and enjoy my life. There's no agenda to acquire a bunch of stuff, live in a big house, get a swimming pool in my backyard, etc. If I can't swim in a natural body of water, forget it. There are a lot of people out there either brainwashed by the system to pursue material success as the key to happiness or with lost souls where they essentially don't know who they are, what their identities are that they were born with in their souls and what they feel they should naturally do with their lives so they compensate for this emptiness within by going out and buying a bunch of things to feel like they're successful by society's standards and give themselves a rush for a minute or too but it never works because you're not dealing with the problem of a bleeding soul. I know the shopping malls are filled every Saturday afternoon while I'm off outdoors somewhere doing one of my particular soulful pursuits. I shouldn't judge other people but I can make the comment that I feel as though I live in a lost society because so many people tie their happiness to what they own materially. A lot of people, particularly girls, have a disease of excess where they'll own a huge room full of clothes, maybe a hundred pair of shoes or so all the while knowing there's some kid in Africa who barely owns one pair of worn out shoes yet all these materialistic addicted people think they're pretty cool, trendy, nice, good people while they live these lives of frivolous excessive waste which strikes me as morally wrong in the karma spirit of life yet this is the hypocrisy I see all the time. Which is why I'm somewhat contemptuous of the society I live in. Don't get me wrong. I like what our society has spawned in creating an abundance of material things at relatively low prices but I only take what I need and don't waste money on buying useless things I'll never use or giving into the fashion sense of frivolity by buying oodles of clothes just because I can afford them. It's all wrong to me that anyone could callously spend $50 on another article of clothing to add to their already overflowing collection when that money would help some poor native survive for a month elsewhere. This is what gets me. All these frivolous people running around with nothing better to do than color their hair, read the tabloids, 
buy new clothes to look fashionable and try to act to cool which is a worthless empty lifestyle to me which is why I don't feel like the typical yuppie capitalist you might see walking around the mall. The modern era has spawned a large credit industry in order for these money lenders to make big profits by lending you money through credit cards and loans and charging you a high interest rate when you pay it off later. This credit system encourages an instant gratification mindset reinforced when we see all the material wealth on TV every night so most of us want it all, want it now like that song by the pop band Queen said, I want it all, I want it now. The net result is a nation of people living with households full of things they don't really own. The bank still owns it and they'll be paying it off for the next several years. Many people fall into vicious cycles of depression over debt so in order to make themselves feel good, they go out and buy something on a credit card to treat themselves with the ultimate result that they're adding to their debt load and it never ends. They're in that work-eat-spend cycle of the rat race right where the system wants them to be, good docile worker clone consumers constantly spending their money and working for it to pay their bills. It's a perfect way to control the masses, a modern-day version of Rome's bread and circuses. I saw a TV show about all these stupid consumers who said with pride how they spent 10 to 12 hours a day every day on eBay.com looking to buy and sell things and add to their collections of junk which they thought enhanced their lives somehow. Get a life. A Partridge Family Lunchbox is a piece of pop culture trash. Anybody who gives it more value than that is a stupid lost soul who deserves the stupid mundane life they're living. The only way to get over it is to clean all the trivial material stuff out of your house, give it to charity if you must or sell it at a yard sale then live a simple life focus on whatever inspired potential you feel in your soul. Get rid of most of your credit cards except for one, pay off your debts as quickly as you can, live as frugally as you can and focus on culturing an inspired life of soulful pursuits and sensuous pleasures which are mostly free, sex and love, and get away from materialist ideology thinking. Go bankrupt if you must then your credit rating will be destroyed for 7 years or more so you won't be able to borrow money which will be a good thing to help you get away from the materialistic lifestyle. My relationship with money is to pursue it by working hard on my naturally inspired pursuits to create something useful that others will pay me for to help me in my quest to live a long free life financially free of worrying about it. I don't care if I live in a little shack in the low class part of town as long as I got some electricity and running water. You really don't need much in order to live a pretty good life. Treatments are often used in conjunction with one another, usually several at a time, whatever works. The most common treatments are Mental health drugs Counseling Support groups Meditation Positive thinking Prayer Journaling Exercise Nutrition Vitamin therapy Holistic methods Books about addictions in general are at hashtag 616.86 or rc564 at the library. Try hashtag 332.019, hashtag 332.4019 or hg221 to hg222 at the library for books about money as an addiction. Creditcardnation.com Shopaholicsanonymous.org Addictions.com Compulsive Picking Info People pick at their own skin to the point of bruising and scratching. Stop-compulsive-picking.com Trichotillomania slash pulling hair out Trichotillomania is hair pulling, pulling out one's own hair, eyelashes, nose hairs, etc. It's considered an impulse control disorder. I read one news story at WebMD.com that said it has a genetic link. TrickHotillomaniaHelp.com TrickH.org TrickHotillomania.co.uk TrickHotillomaniaHelp.com TrickHotillomania-Help.com TrickHotillomania-Support.com OCD Websites AACAP.org slash publication slash fax fam slash OCD dot htm, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder ASAP Facts for Families Brochure Number 60 Cyberpsych.org slash CGI hyphen bin slash BBS 51 slash TNOCD.pl, 
CyberPsych Teen OCD Free Online Discussion Board. En.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash obsessive hyphen compulsive underscore disorder. Fairlight.com slash OCD. Health.indiamart.com slash mental health slash obsessive compulsiveeditor.html. Healthtexis.com slash memocic.html, obsessive compulsive. Healthyplace.com slash community slash OCD slash nimh slash index.html. IGLU.com slash Fairlight slash OCD. MedicineNet.com slash obsessive underscore compulsive underscore disorder underscore OCD slash page 2.htm. MentalHealth.com slash dis slash p20 hyphen and 05.html, obsessive compulsive disorder. MTECH.CSD.UWM.EDU slash FAIRLIGHT slash OCD. NIMH.NIH.GOV slash health information slash OCD menu.CFM, obsessive compulsive disorder, free resources. OCDaction.org.uk. OCDHOPE.com. OCDLaw.com, OCD Center of Los Angeles, a private clinic. OCFoundation.org. OCDLaw.com slash what is OCD.html, what is OCD? OCDresource.com, 800 news for OCD. OCD-world.org.uk. SciC.memphis.edu slash students slash Abramovitz slash OCD.htm. TheRootCause.co.uk. WebHome.idirect.com slash tilde redon slash obsess.html. Anxiety Disorders Association of America. 11900 Park Lawn Drive. Number 100. Rockville, Maryland, 20852. 301 231 9350. Fax, 301 231 9350. ADA.org. National Institute of Mental Health. 5600 Fishers Lane. Hashtag 7C02. Rockville, Maryland, 20857. 301-443-4513. NIMH.NIH.gov. Free booklet, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Obsessive Compulsive and. Spectrum Disorders Association. 18653 Ventura Boulevard. Number 414. Tarzana, California, 91356. 818-990-4830. Fax, 818-760-3784. OCDHelp.org. Obsessive Compulsive Foundation. 337 Notch Hill Road. N. Branford, Connecticut, 06471. 203-315-2190. Fax, 203-315-2196. OCFoundation.org. Obsessive Compulsive Information Center. Madison Institute of Medicine. 7617, Mineral Point. RD. Number 300. Madison, Wisconsin, 53717. 608-827-2470. Fax, 608-827-2479. Mimianc.org. Obsessive Compulsive Information Center. 204-825 Sherbrooke St. Winnipeg, MBR3A1M5. 204-942-3331. Members.shaw.ca slash OCC Manitoba slash index.